In this video, I'm talking about the reverse slope hearing loss, coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. One of the rarest and possibly one of the most difficult hearing losses to treat with hearing aids is the reverse slope hearing loss. To provide you with a little bit of context, the vast majority of individuals with hearing loss have a gradually sloping high frequency sensory neural hearing loss, which you can see here in this audiogram. For these types of hearing losses, the hearing ability in the low frequency ranges are usually pretty good, and it starts to slope off in the mid and into the high frequencies where the worst hearing ability is in the high frequency ranges. While treatment success rates can vary with this type of hearing loss, as long as your hearing care professional follows best practices, you should be able to receive a significant amount of benefit with hearing aids. However, a reverse slope hearing loss on the other hand, like you can see here in this audiogram, is when you have bad low frequency hearing and it ends up getting better as you go into the mids and into the high frequencies. Sometimes your high frequency hearing is actually completely inside the normal range. While reverse slope hearing losses are not very common, I do see a fair amount of them inside of my clinic, and each individual with a reverse slope hearing loss usually requires a unique treatment setup in order to address their hearing concerns successfully. Reverse slope hearing losses can be caused by genetic conditions, Meniere's disease, a sudden sensory neural hearing loss, or a cardiovascular condition. The symptoms of reverse slope hearing loss can often leave you feeling like you just need more volume from speech, and it can give you the perception that you're not hearing males as well as you are females. It can also cause issues with hearing on the telephone and hearing things that are low frequency in nature, like a refrigerator humming, an air conditioner running, or machine noise. Now there's some talk out there about how hearing aid manufacturers completely ignore hearing devices that address reverse slope hearing loss because the group of individuals with reverse slope hearing loss just aren't that big. But that's not really a valid complaint because we're dealing with acoustics and what acoustics allow us to do with hearing technology. The reason treating reverse slope hearing loss is so difficult is for three main reasons. And the first reason is insertion loss. Insertion loss is when we're actually giving you a hearing loss because we're blocking blocking sound from getting into your ear canals naturally. In order to fully amplify low frequency sounds inside of your ear canal, we need to completely close off your ear canal so those low frequency sound waves don't just leak right out, giving you no perceptible benefit. We would typically do this with a power dome, which completely seals off your ear canal, or a custom ear mold that has no venting at all. However, if we take this approach and completely block off your ear canals, this leads to a situation where we now need to amplify in those frequency ranges that you may have normal hearing throughout the mid and high frequencies, which is never as good as using your natural hearing ability. But if we open up the venting or we open up the dome to allow those mid and high frequencies to come back into your ears naturally, we lose the ability to amplify the low frequencies. Now let's say that you were okay with completely blocking off your ears to boost up the low frequency amplification and then amplifying over your mid and high frequencies. Well then you run into a second limitation which is called the occlusion effect. The occlusion effect occurs when you plug up your ears with something and then when you talk your voice gets bone conducted through your jaw and your skull, ends up in your ear canals and it cannot escape. Then this sound vibration ends up moving your eardrum giving you the perception that your own voice is really loud to yourself. This table illustrates the vent size needed to minimize the occlusion effect. If your hearing loss at 500 Hz is between 20 to 29 dBHL, then you would need to have a 3 to 4 millimeter vent size to prevent the occlusion effect. If your thresholds are between 30 to 39 dBHL, then you would need a 2 to 3 millimeter vent. However, if your hearing loss at 500 Hz is greater than 60 dBHL, you are not likely to experience the occlusion effect even if you have no venting at all. So to prevent the occlusion effect, either you need a large enough vent or you need bad enough hearing so you don't perceive it. The third reason why reverse slope hearing loss is so difficult to treat 
is that the perception of treatment success is different for everybody with this type of hearing loss. I've treated a number of individuals with reverse slope hearing loss and it seems like every single one of them wants something different. Whether it's a completely occluding ear mold, whether it's a completely occluding dome, whether it is a vented dome or a fully open dome or an acoustically optimized vent inside of an ear mold, everybody has their own perceptions and there's no right or wrong when it comes to this. If we go with a fully occluding ear mold, we're able to amplify the low frequency effectively, but we have to overcome the insertion loss in the mid and high frequencies with amplification. Acoustically optimized venting inside of an ear mold allows us to get some low frequency amplification without creating as much insertion loss in the mids and highs, so we don't have to amplify as much there. A vented rubber dome usually gets us a little bit of low frequency amplification without causing too much mid and high frequency insertion loss. And then an open dome gives us no insertion loss, but it really doesn't give us any ability to amplify the low frequencies. So you wanna know the tricks to treating reverse slope hearing loss successfully? Well, it comes down to adjusting the hearing treatment based on your perception and giving you the ability to self-customize your own treatment. Basically, we need to try different things to see how you perceive sound and to see if you're actually getting benefit. And to spur this along, I really like to allow my patients to have some ability to adjust their own amplification using a smartphone app. This means that we may have to switch between different types of ear tips that go inside of your ears to see ultimately which one you prefer. And then you actually have to actively participate in your own treatment, meaning when you go into certain situations, you have to start making adjustments inside of an app to customize your own audio. Once you do that, the hearing care professional can actually look at what adjustments you're making to get the sound that you want, and then they can actually go into your programming and make that the standard for you. One thing that really helps with us being able to do this successfully is real ear measurement. Real ear measurement lets us measure the amount of amplification that you're getting inside of your ear canals so we can see the differences between different types of domes and different types of self-customizations that you've done on your own. Once we identify this, then we know now and into the future what you actually prefer based on all of the customizations that we've made for you. In my experience, most individuals with reverse slope hearing loss tend to prefer a little bit more mid and high frequency amplification and a little bit less low frequency amplification than what you would expect. Which is exactly why it is so important to take the time necessary to identify what specific preferences you have as an individual with reverse slope hearing loss because no two individuals are identical. At the end of the day, treating reverse slope hearing loss successfully is extremely difficult, but it is by no means impossible. As long as you're willing to put in the work and you have a hearing care professional who's willing to commit the time to your treatment, then you should be able to experience treatment success. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.